I bought this arcade one-up NFL Blitz for $250, which is a pretty good deal. But I didn't buy it for the game. I bought it for the cabinet, because my in-game goal was to convert it to a main, and I accomplished that goal. And now I'm going to show you how I did it. Now some of you already know this, but MAME, or an arcade machine, is actually where I first got into the hobby of pinball, actually. I started with a Tech and Tag tournament, and then I turned that into a MAME once I discovered that you could do that kind of thing. The ability to play every game I played as a kid on one machine, uh, yes please. Now that Tech and Tag machine was only a two player and I wanted a four player cabinet, so eventually I upgraded to a showcase cabinet and made it a four player MAME. Had that for a lot of years and then when it came to moving and it just took up a lot of space and I was more into pinball than I was into that, so I sold it. And honestly, I've been wanting to get another main, but I did not want it taking up a lot of real estate. Hence why I lean towards the arcade one-up for this particular reason. It has a small footprint. Sure, the quality isn't top-notch, but it's going to get the job done. And the thing is, I've been out of the main hobby for so long that there's more than likely better ways to go about doing this conversion than what I did. For instance, when it comes to the computer inside, the computer I have is way overkill for what you're going to need when it comes to running only arcade machine games, unless you're going for the higher 3D type of games like your tech and tag and stuff like that. The conversion for this cost me around 110 bucks and that's because I already have some of the hardware meaning like the computer and HDMI cables and stuff like that. If you go the PC route that's probably going to be one of your most expensive items but by all means I've heard many great things about the Raspberry Pi. I've used it one time in the past, I had a RetroPie, but it wasn't strong enough to run everything, and I wanted to run everything, but that's all about personal preference. The front end that I'm using is LaunchBox. There are plenty of different ones out there. You will have to find which one you like best. There's plenty of videos out there going over this entire hobby of MAME. So I suggest if you are really serious about converting your arcade one up into one, then you may want to check out a lot of other channels. One of those channels is ETA Prime. I will put a link in the description down below for his channel. He goes over all things emulation. I was questioned if the 49-way joysticks that it comes with are going to be compatible with uh, like the arcade control sticks that I purchased. And it doesn't look like they are. I connected one of the joysticks to that 49 way and I wasn't getting any kind of signal or readings in the software. So chances are there's some kind of special encoder involved on the proprietary hardware that you're gonna end up removing. Everything that I put into this machine, I will have links in the description down below. Now, one of the downsides to this current status is that my marquee is not lit. Some of you, that doesn't bother, but I know a lot of you out there want your marquees to be lit. Me, on the other hand, it doesn't bother me because I saw it when it was lit and it's pretty washed out. And evidently that's a common thing with arcade one-up marquees is that they're not very opaque. So the light shines through them way too easily and it looks washed out. And that marquee is like right there at my eye level, so I don't need it to shine in my face. I'm perfectly content with my marquee not being lit up. And yes, I know there are ways to light it up, but I don't really care if mine's lit. So that's just my personal preference. Now, this video is mainly only for those of you out there that have the NFL Blitz cabinet. So I can't vouch for any other particular generation or cabinet with Arcade 1UP having the same ease of install. One of the mods I plan on doing in the future is having my uh, coin buttons lit up. That is a, an easy thing that I believe I can be able to do that. I just need to order the hardware I need and even then I think I could do it even cheaper. Just need a, a strip of LEDs. I've got an idea. I just haven't done it yet but eventually you'll see in future videos where my coin buttons down here, my coin inserts, will be lit up. Okay, so here is my arcade 1-Up 
control panel. I have removed it from the cabinet over there, and this is what it looks like now. Got my quarter buttons for all my players right here, and different joysticks and buttons with all light up capabilities. So, the first thing you're going to notice is that there's three additional buttons here and right here. Those three on both players one and two, and all four of my quarter buttons down here are the only holes that I drilled. There's a couple of different bits that you can use. These uh, step bits right here pretty useful. That's, what, that's the tool that I used. I'll uh, put the other bits in the description down below. But, uh, so this is what it looks like on the outside. And over here where the, where the wires come out are four USB cables. One for each player. So, we're going to open this up and show you what it looks like inside of this thing. Let's turn it over. Alright, so let's remove all of the Phillips head screws that are all the way around the perimeter of this control panel. And we'll see if we can get a better view on the inside. All right, so here is what it looks like on the inside. The coin buttons are right there. Now, the positioning from where I got these, I had to be pretty careful, but I guesstimated it, and it turned out to be perfect. So the spacing on where it's at does not touch anything on the control panel that's up here. These, I probably just need to go ahead and cut these and get rid of them because this is the original volume and power button to the Arcade 1-Up, but they're not hurting anything being there, so I'm just letting them be. Now, every player has their own joystick controller board and the USB that goes to the computer. The computer will recognize this as a generic joystick, and whenever you boot up your software, then you can basically choose which button does what inside the software. These particular buttons have four leads. Two of these leads are for the LED and the other two are for your switch. And the switch, it doesn't matter. They're not polarity because it's just a switch. Whenever it makes a connection, can't see anything on this side. Whenever it makes a connection, it lets that board know that, hey, this switch has been activated. Now the LED on the other hand, that is polarity based. So you need to make sure that you have the orientation those correct what's funny is that it says positive and it has an arrow pointing to this but it's actually ground i don't know why if that's a misprint or what but all of the buttons i mean i'm used to positive being red and negative being ground so that's how i first wired it and they didn't work and once i reversed them they all worked so just keep that in mind in case you have that issue food for thought but every player has their own button sequence their quarter corresponds to that controller board that it's attached to now i do have the exit button wired to player two instead of player one it doesn't matter it's just that this particular player has an additional um control plugged into the board it's no big deal but this is my exit button up here, which used to be the live button on Blitz. But this is how to exit out of all my uh, games or back out of a certain, uh, you know, arcade module or PlayStation or whatever I'm deciding to play. It's basically my backup button or exit button. But that's what it looks like on the inside. And these are the aftermarket controllers. I've got these boards on here using double-sided had tape you could screw these in if you want to but i just wanted it to be able to be removed and moved around if i needed to because as you can see the positioning on these is pretty snug but i've got it to work these joysticks are obviously not the ones that came with the system i would like to try the 49 way joystick out to see if it plugs in and works because it looks like it may fit into this particular port right here so i wonder if it would work i'm gonna try that out in this video so get, get i'll let you get back if that 49 joystick works for this thing then that'll save you a lot of headache right there of having to uh re-drill new holes for these aftermarket joysticks so that's the fun part is that you have to 
uh, get the joysticks all centered and then drill new holes for that to be where it's at. So that's where all my control sticks are currently at and the boards that correspond to them. And they all feed through this hole. Now I had to do a little bit of damage but you're never going to see that in order to get all the USB cables through there. So, yeah. So, you wouldn't even know that was there unless I showed it to you. So, but that's basically the control panel. Now, let me show you what I've got going on in the cabinet. All right. So, this is what you're going to need to do in order to get your monitor to, to work with, like, an HDMI or DVI or VGA source. And you have to purchase this there. Uh, once again, link will be in the description. And I know this board works for at least this generation, which I believe is generation three. Now I had to mount it on this plate to the monitor, which I, I don't like doing, um, cause I don't want any of, of the back pins touching this. And this cord is only as long as it is. So that's, that's, that's as far as it goes, but I've got, once again, more of the double-sided sticky tape just to make sure that it's not touching anything. i got it like double plated on the back so the board's not going anywhere. It's not touching anything. It shouldn't. The power cable that comes with this game will fit into the same board. So that's a plus. And then the HDMI cable merely goes to your source or your PC. And audio, like the speakers... I've got going to my PC. Now the PC is just a merely a small computer like this. All four of my joysticks right here, one, two, three, four, HDMI and power. That's all I've got going to this particular system. And I'm using the headphone jack right here for the audio from the computer. I have not tried yet, but there is a, a line out and headphone jack on this board. So you might be able to just hook up to this and the audio may be able to go to the HDMI if the ability is there. It may, I just haven't tested it yet. So that may also be an option for you. So these cords go in just like this. Red goes on this particular side like that. I didn't have to make any kind of adjustments on this control panel right here. This this monitor boots up without any kind of adjustments and it looks great. So when it comes to that, that's that's all there. So now when it comes to just powering all this, you have two different methods. And the first method I did whenever I first did this, because like I said, I was wanting to do function over form. So all I did was take the two power cables because you're gonna have two, one for your monitor and one for your PC. And then you can cut like a small hole in the side of the back of your panel and just feed them through to plug into the wall. Now, depending on the kind of computer you use, depends on if it's gonna power one up, power up when you apply power to it or do you actually have to use a power button? That depends on the kind of computer you use. The one I'm using, I merely just have to have power going to it and then it automatically boots up. So, that's the method you can do is just plug it in and that's what I was doing. But now what I have going now is this. I've got this switch that feeds to this outlet and then the monitor and the computer plug in right there. And then all I gotta do Plug that in right there, and then turn that on like that. It's going into Windows. So it's loading into Windows. It's going to launch up my front end, which is LaunchBox. That's my own intro, um, but once you're in here, then all you gotta do is 
choose if you want to play let's say an arcade game that's the one i want to play we'll hit start button on that now if i want a particular where am i at i got all these arcade games all these arcade games right here are going to require quarters this is the one i want to play and then i have the option for play So we're going to boot up Street Fighter 2 Warrior Edition. And normally, see, so you can't hit start or do anything because it needs you to insert coin. So we'll just insert coin. Let's see, you can sit there and just rack up the credits as many as you want to, or as what the game limits you to. Hit start. This joystick goes over here. You want two players. And you can have two players going. Like that. And if I want to exit out of this game, I'll just hit my exit button. And then I'm back to this screen right here. Just like that, guys. So I wanted to show you what I also had to do due to that being where it's at down there is that I had to cut a part of the back panel off. But it slides in position down there. And then you're in position. Good to go. And then you can just power it off with the switch down right here like you do a lot of the normal arcades or certain ones, depending on wherever the switch is at. And then I'll put like a screw up here through this so that way this is not like that. Whoop, see. Uh, there we go. So there you go. That is how I went about converting my arcade one up into a MAME. Now I know there's plenty of you out there that wanted more information about like the software and how to go about mapping the keys and stuff like that. When it comes to software guys and MAME, that would make this video so much longer because there are so many variables involved because it's going to depend on the type of front end you use the emulators that you use uh even the operating system when it comes to whether or not you're using a computer or the raspberry pi so when it comes to software and getting that all worked out i am going to have to plead to you to please look elsewhere there are plenty of content available on YouTube on how to go about doing this. Everything that you're going to need to do what I did, I will have links in the description down below. If by chance I did happen to miss a link or something like that, by all means, let me know in the comments section down below and I will try to provide that as soon as possible. I mean, so how does that look, guys? I mean, I feel like I'm going to get the coin inserts to light up so that'll give it closer to a realistic look. I don't, and I, I'm trying to think of what it's gonna look like also on camera. Like, do I want it to have like some lights behind it also that shine on the wall? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> do I want to put this much effort into something like this? I, 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 I was part of the reason why I got it is that I wouldn't have to throw a bunch of money at the damn thing. But I feel like over time I might. I don't know, but I don't think I want to go through all that. I at least want to make the coin door, the, the coin uh, slots light up. That's bare minimum. I at least want to get that done. I mean, chances are I'm going to have this arcade one up for a year or so or until it craps out on me and then I'll upgrade to an, an at games arcade legends or something like that. I've been hearing a lot of good things about that.